El Tigre has long been an autarky, almost cut off from the world. The development of tourism and exchanges with neighboring Colombia have gradually transformed the daily life of the inhabitants. Traditional houses made from palm and bamboo are gradually being replaced by cinder block constructions. Electricity, telephone, and television have entered people's homes. Leo lives with his wife and daughter in a traditional hut with no water or electricity. Your daughter is almost the same age as mine. Did you build the whole house? Life is simple here. If you want to build a house, you go to the village assembly and make a request. I built this one with friends. They helped me get everything. Then we built it in two or three days. It's all about unity, and it endures. Walking around the village, I notice that nothing is locked up. The houses here are simple. They have no doors because in this community, everyone knows everyone else. Everyone is related, so there's no need for doors. I like it that way. Look, my kitchen has no walls. Has that solidarity helped maintain this way of life through the centuries? We have a very strong sense of solidarity here. I believe strongly in the passing on of a tradition. If every father teaches his children and gives them advice, they will grow up with it. That's how the tradition of my ancestors has been maintained. Community life plays an important role in the everyday life of the Guna. It is governed by the Congreso, the village assembly. In the center are the Silas, sitting in their hammocks, singing poems in Yaka, a language only they understand. It is a moment of communion and meditation that unites the Guna around their stories and the spirits that protect them. Not until after nightfall are decisions on community life taken. This morning, the village streets are beneath water. A storm blew up during the night and overwhelmed the island. El Tigre barely breaks the surface of the sea, and its beaches offer no protection against an onslaught from the waves. To protect themselves, the islanders try to prevent erosion by planting trees. Looking back over my 74 years, I've seen many changes. The most important thing is the rise in the sea level. When the tidal coefficient is high, the village is totally flooded. That never used to be the case. The islands are simply disappearing. Look at this coconut tree. It's about to fall down. There are no more roots. They are all cut. Yes, the waves eat away at the earth and roots. Before very long, the tree will fall. 
Do you have an explanation for these changes? The behavior of man has changed, at least with regard to Guna tradition and culture. Today there are many fishermen, but they flout tradition. For example, we've always fished for lobster, but we would take only two or three. Nowadays, men no longer believe in God. They think they can do as they please. God sees them and soon men will be punished. That's the cultural explanation in any case. Personally, I believe more in scientific explanations. We're destroying the entire ecosystem. Rivers, tides, winds, everything is being changed by human activities. You are blaming mankind, but could it be the fault of the Guna too? Exactly. The Guna are part of humanity. So we do not escape this reality. As humans, we also contribute to destroying the ecosystem because we too are guilty of negative activities that harm the environment. Have you seen any islands disappear? One island is suffering terrible erosion problems. It used to be large, but is visibly reduced in size. Sooner or later, it's bound to disappear altogether. The offshore islands are also the most endangered. Although mostly uninhabited, they play an important economic role. Each Guna family has land on these islands covered with coconut trees. For many of them, harvesting and selling coconuts is their sole income. It's blowing hard here. It's really windy compared to the other side. These are the trade winds. This is the last island of the archipelago. There are no more after this one. Pirates used to land here. Today, locals come to collect coconuts. It's not making any noise, meaning it's bad. We'll look for others. There are others here. That's an old one. Uh, this one is fine. No, no. I'm used to making knots all day, like sailors do. See, my handbag. Nice, don't you think? No, 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 no. That belongs to another family. We can't take it. How do you know the difference? My grandfather taught me. This is your plot, it belongs to your family. This is another family's, so we cannot pick them. We must respect other families. So we can't touch any of those. They're beautiful. Each plot is delineated, passed on from generation to generation. This one belongs to my family. Five of us share it. That's why we don't climb the trees. If I go up and take them all, you'll come along and say, where are all the coconuts? So we wait until they fall, otherwise there'll be none left. Let's go. This is my camp, the family's camp.
Have you always lived here? No, I used to live in Panama. I worked there for eight years. One day I decided to come back to my village. When I was at work there, I kept thinking about my village. It was always in my heart. In Panama, life is different. At 7 a.m., your boss tells you to come to work. I felt like I was in prison, as if I had no freedom. Here it's different. You can come to the island, fish, collect coconuts, get up whenever you want. Here you are free. I often sail solo, and there's a side of that in the life here, in the islands, with the sand boats. Do you like the solitary nature of things here? Yes and no. Family is important to the Guna, both our own and everyone else's. We don't live alone. I don't think solitude suits us well. We prefer family life. Do you ever feel like taking your canoe and heading out to sea? Yes, I'd love to do that and take everything with me. But my ulu is very small, so I couldn't take much. But yes, I'd love to travel around the world, like you, with my ulu, of course. In an ulu? Now that would be something. <laughs> ¶¶